Okay, so today we're going to talk about, with tongue in cheek, how to push God away. You're going to say, well, this is a strange place to learn how to push God away. But I'm hoping that by the end of my talk here today, that you're going to see that maybe you've pushed God away in some ways that maybe you haven't thought of before. And if you find yourself at the end of this, this morning finding out that maybe you have pushed God away, I'm hoping you're going to see some ways that you can attract God back closer to your life again. Martin Luther King Jr. said, Nothing in the world is more dangerous than sincere ignorance and conscientious stupidity. Sincere ignorance and conscientious, conscientious stupidity. Have you ever met dumb people who are too dumb that they know that they're dumb? No. They're too dumb to know that they're dumb. Mm -hmm. One night, a, a, a few years ago, one, one man was driving down a one-way street. And the young man turned the corner on the opposite end of the street and was coming toward him. So the young man and most men in this place and watching the video here really have been young once or twice, I think, in your lifetime. And he went head to head with this young man and he sticks his head out of the sunroof and said, hey man, this is a one-way street. He was coming down the wrong way. Has, has anybody here done some stupid stuff mm -hmm. that you didn't realize at the time it was stupid until after you found out a week later you did something stupid? Mm -hmm. Amen. The, the interesting story. In a far, far away land, there was a, there was a river. This river was home to many golden swans. The swans spent most of their time on the banks of the river. It was beautiful. Every six months, the swans would leave a golden feather as a fee for using their water, their lake. The soldiers of the kingdom would collect the feathers and, and bring them to the king for the royal treasury. And one day, a homeless bird saw the birds and the water and the river looked so cool and soothing. And, and he said, I'll, I'll make my home there. As soon as the birds settled down and the golden swans paid attention to her, they came shouting, honk, honk, the river belongs to us. We too have a golden feather, but you don't have a golden feather because you don't have golden feathers. The, the, the guest bird says, I'm homeless, brothers. I too will pay the rent. Give me shelter. But the other golden feather bird said, how will you pay the rent? You don't have golden feathers. And the swans started laughing. Honk, honk, honk. They started laughing. They further added, stop dreaming and just live once. Just, just get out of here. Just leave. The humble bird pleaded many times, but the arrogant swans drove away the bird. I'll teach them a lesson, said the bird that didn't have the golden beauty about her. She went to the king and said, oh, king, the swans in your river are impolite and unkind. And I begged for shelter, but they said that they had purchased the river with their golden feathers. Oh, the king was angry with the arrogant swans for having insulted the homeless bird. He ordered his soldiers to bring the arrogant swans to his court. In no time, the golden swans were brought to the king's court. Do you think the royal treasury depends upon your golden feathers? You cannot decide who lives by my river. Leave the river at once or you will be beheaded, shouted the king. Rock, rock, rock. Swans, one by one, filed and they shivered with fear on hearing the king's news and they flew away never to be seen again. But the bird without the golden feathers built her home near the water and lived there happily ever after. And the bird gave shelter to all the other birds in the river. Kind of like a silly story about how God looks at people that are who think they're, they're all that. Mm. Will Rogers said one time, never miss a good chance to shut up. <laughs> never miss a good chance to shut up. Have you ever thought that there were some in intelligent people around you, maybe at work or maybe in your neighborhood, and you just by observation, you really thought they were somebody until they opened their mouth? <laughs> and started talking, and you realize that, you know what, they're about as dumb as a brick. Over in 1 Samuel chapter 2, 1 Samuel chapter 2, there's a, there's a little piece of scripture there in verse number 3 
that says, do not keep talking so proudly or let your mouth speak, speak such arrogance. For the Lord is a God who knows, and by him deeds are weighed. Now, there's, there's an interesting correlation that's been scientifically documented. That people at the bottom think that they're outperforming other people. And there's even a wider term that says that people don't know that they don't know. Remember I said in the beginning, there's some stupid people who don't know they're stupid. Have you ever met people who really, really don't have a clue, and they try to tell you things that they don't have a clue about, and they look so stupid, so dumb? In fact, more times than, than not, people who don't know that they don't know think that they know. And then Proverbs says clearly that God brings those kinds of people down. So being smart means really thinking things through. In fact, what the scripture tells us is to, to run our, our choices and our decisions and our goals and our dreams through what the scriptures say. So today we're talking about how to push God away. And that, that's, that's certainly with, with tongue in cheek because we certainly don't want to push God away in any way. So it still blows my mind that those who think they know don't realize how stupid they are and how silly they sound. I, I've joked with certain people who know how to work on cars, and I come up with this ridiculous sounding, where we, if you connect this with that and this with that, they know I'm joking, but it sounds very stupid, right? One, one person said, very smart ideas are going to be hard for people to adopt because most people don't have the sophistication to recognize how good it, a good idea really is. Have you ever tried to tell young people the right way to go? Mm -hmm. Unconscious incompetent. They don't know that they don't know. And then all of a sudden, as I've shared before in this place, that when you reach your mid-20s, you realize, you know what, it's, it's amazing how intelligent my parents really were. But that's not, that doesn't happen for a few more years. So Lord, give me grace. Mm -hmm. Walter Cronkite said, whatever the cost of our libraries, the price is cheap compared to that of an ignorant nation. You know what I've seen over the last 10 years or more? That more and more people don't read. More, more, more and more people don't read books. More and more people choose not to pick up a book and delve into that information. They, they're stuck on the TV. They're stuck on video games instead of reading books. So to, to, so to know what's written in the scriptures, to know what God says for you in your own life, and you choose not to do it, that's, that's almost like the unconscious incompetent. You, you choose not to do it. You choose not to live by what God's word teaches us. Plato said, I'm the wisest man alive, for I know one thing, and that is I know nothing. I really believe in my heart of hearts, through what I've read in scripture, that God honors those who know that God knows all. I'll say it again. God honors those who know that God knows all, that we put our faith and confidence in God, that God knows what he's trying to do through us, even though we may look silly at the time and maybe not so bright all the time. But if our heart is in the right place, and as we'll see at the end, that God honors our worship and our praise, and that's what attracts God to us. Instead of pushing God away by our pride, guess what? We're going to be much farther in God's ways than we are right now. A guy named Stephen Greenspan told a very interesting story back in January of this year. He says, a, a neighbor of mine out west, and he called him Bob Smith. That's not his real name, but Bob Smith was a wealthy man who owned his own airplane. He had a, re he had a re reputation for being a know-it-all and would dismiss any advice. On the ground, he thought he knew better. Um, a, a crazy example of that is when Bob hired a photographer to take a photograph of his family. In fact, he just wanted one photograph, but the photographer wanted to take multiple photographs to get the best photograph. Well, Bob, since he knew it all, he decided to let her only take one photograph and one photograph only, and of course, it wasn't the photograph that he wanted, so he lost out on getting the photograph that he wanted. But, this, but the story goes beyond that and in, in, a, in a very sad way. Bob's arrogance was really, it really ended one day when he took his grandson and another adult up on a plane ride over the Rocky Mountains. He came back into a small airport and the tower operator told, her, told him that he was coming in too low and he needed to 
increase his altitude. And he responded in his usual style by rejecting the controller's warning. And the plane flew into a hill and killed himself and both passengers too because, you see, he knew better. He was an unconscious incompetent. He didn't know that he didn't know. Now, many people in our world today don't know that they don't know. They don't know that there's answers to every problem they have right here in Scripture. And another example was illustrated back in December 1941 where a young man saw a blip on the radar screen and he told that to his bosses that there's some planes coming in and they don't look like they're ours. Well, since he was relatively new, they ignored him and Pearl Harbor happened because somebody ignored somebody who knew. That's right. But because they had a chip on their shoulder that they thought they knew better, then many, many lives were lost. One time over in Luke chapter 14, starting in verse 10, Jesus even told a story about arrogant people. He said, when someone invites you to a wedding banquet, don't take the place of honor in case someone more important than you uh, that has maybe been invited. Then one who's invited will come and say, make room for this person and you'll be embarrassed and have to take the lowest place. In other words, Jesus is saying, take a seat in the back. They'll take a seat in the front. Because you never know when the person who's, quote, more important has to really bump you out. So we're talking about how to push God away. Tell me cheap, of course. Over in Luke 18, starting in verse 9 in, in the scriptures, it says that Jesus told a story about someone who had great confidence in his righteousness and scorned everybody else. It says two men went to the temple to pray. One was a, a religious guy and the other one was a despised tax collector. Worked for the IRS. The Pharisee stood by himself and and prayed this prayer. He said, I thank God for I'm not a sinner like everybody else. For I don't cheat, I don't sin, I don't commit adultery, and I'm certainly not like that tax collector. I fast twice a week, and I give a tenth of my income. But the tax collector stood at a distance and dared not even lift his eyes toward heaven as he prayed. Instead, he, he beat his chest in sorrow, saying, Oh God, be merciful to me, for I am a sinner. He says, I tell you, the sinner, not the Pharisee, returned home justified before God. For thus, for those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. It's just, like I said earlier on, it's an oxymoron with God. You think that in our culture you have to push yourself ahead. I'm not saying that you don't work hard. I'm not saying that you don't get your name out there to do what you got to do. I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying, though, but the end result is what God decides to do. We have to do our part. We have to, we have to sow the seeds over and over. We have to, as Scripture says, ask, seek, and knock. And I, I do a lot of asking, a lot of seeking, a lot of knocking. But eventually, God's the one who puts up. By the way, God's the one who, who takes down. And then Scripture talks about the, the, the King James puts it, the works of the flesh, that, that, those nasty characteristics that really, that really push God away from us in our own lives. God. Amen. Uh, an ancient text says to, that we're supposed to think so, soberly of ourselves. Do not set your mind on those high things that don't matter. A, hum a humble person really doesn't focus on how big, on how a big impression that they want to leave on people. They want to leave an impression on the Almighty and give yeah. their lives to God wholly and completely, because the Christian faith, if you really stop and think about it, that the Christian faith is humbling all by itself. 